With less moderate to severe eczema, why hide your skin? If you can help heal your skin from within. With Dupixent, adults saw long-lasting, clearer skin and significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. Hey, if you're in Hawaii, you have to check out the Aha Aina Luau at the Royal Hawaiian. It is straight fire. Ooh, literally. Fire. Like for real. And wait, fire. Minute, speaking of fire, Kevin, you've been looking like a male model. Can I oh, do my model? Embracing move? the Hawaiian model fashion. Model. Look model. at him. Yeah. Model. You're kind of like the uh, Aloha Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to thank our guys from uh, Pagang in Kyoto, Japan. <laughs> They sent us these shirts, they're amazing. Now tomorrow on ET, I'm gonna have my visit to your set, Zach, and your buddy Stephen Hill's gonna guest co-host for us. Tell us something about Stephen that we don't know. You know, Stephen is, he's kind of a samurai. He does a sword practicing. He's an imposing figure, but he's a big teddy bear, and I think a lot of people don't know that about him. Wow. wow. Yeah. You know what, Zach, thank you for being here. Yes. And more importantly, thank your wife for letting you be <laughs> here. You, honey. Yes, yeah. we can't wait. Congratulations on the new baby beforehand from all of us, your family now, Magnum P.I. Happening now. Finally, you can vaccinate your young kids. Where to go and how parents feel about getting their children vaccinated. We've heard from the supporters of expanding the city's non discrimination ordinance, but what about possible opposition? And when could this issue come up? Feeling the chill outside today. However, temperatures will be on the upswing. I'll see you in a bit to chat about it. The holiday hustle is on, but if you're already stressed out about finding what you want, Breathe Easy coming up will have some shopping strategies that can help. The news at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, we have a breaking news update on the suspect charged in the shooting at the Quarry Market. We've learned 18-year-old Julio Cesar Rivera is actually facing new charges in relation to a robbery last month. San Antonio police say that back on October 19th, Rivetta robbed a woman and her five-year-old daughter at gunpoint outside of a convenience store in the 5500 block of Highway 87 East. The victim told officers that Rivetta approached her as she was leaving and demanded her keys. Rivera arrested Tuesday after attempting to carjack a different woman at the quarry market, ended up shooting her in the face. He now faces two additional charges of aggravated robbery. Investigators believe he may be connected to other incidents as well. New at five, a bit of relief. It's what many Bear County parents are feeling after getting their younger children vaccinated against COVID-19. University Health began administering the Pfizer vaccine to kids as young as five years old today. Our Stefania Jimenez live at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall. Stefania, I can hear the activity behind you. It sounds like it's pretty busy so far. Yeah, it sounds like it's busy because it really is. Even at this hour, I'll step out of the way so that you can get a clear view of what's happening right here. You've got a lot of families, a lot of parents here getting their kids vaccinated. Also, people are coming here to get their booster shots. University Health is vaccinating 1,100 people a day here. And we're hearing that they are booked all the way through Monday. University Health started vaccinating five to 11-year-old kids today after the CDC greenlit using a lower dose Pfizer vaccine for kids in that younger age group earlier this week. Now, University Health is telling families to make their appointments online, and families say that, you know what? This has been a long time coming. Listen. Peace of mind uh, for us and our family and cousins and grandparents and uh, other family members that we haven't been able to see in some time. Once they get their second dose, we know that what Christmas time and those holidays, um, that, that, you know, they do have that extra layer and that they can actually interact with family members and, and, and start to, to, to kind of assimilate back in with their friends and families. Yeah, a lot of parents say that now they're able to finally turn the page in some way. Now, naturally, vaccine hesitancy is an issue for some families. And so a lot of the health professionals are saying, listen, if that's you, if you're worried about this vaccine, you should call your physician, ask them questions, uh, because, you know, we just want to emphasize that this Pfizer vaccine that was approved for kids 5 to 11, it's a lower dose of the Pfizer vaccine, which usually also carries 
minimal side effects. Now, the other thing that we want to let you know is that this is not the only place here in town that is vaccinating kids in that younger age group. We actually have a list of those places for you on our website, ksat.com. For now, we are live here. Stephanie Jimenez, KSAT 12. Back to you. Well, the low clouds are lingering outside and they kept our temperatures down. We topped out at 56 degrees. That's as warm as it got today. 56. That's a good 20 degrees below average for this time of year. Right now we're at 55 at the airport. Dew point of 46 and the wind has calmed a bit out of the north northeast at 8 miles per hour. Del Rio now at 61. 54 currently in shirts. 57 Seguin. And you'll notice some of the rainfall accumulations. Universal City a little over an inch and just outside of Lavernia about two and a half inches of rainfall from all that activity we had yesterday. Remaining cloudy through the evening and cool, but not a huge temperature drop. We'll be in the upper 40s by midnight. I'll break down low temperatures for all across our area coming up. Talk about the temperature rebound as well in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. A wanted murder suspect has been arrested in San Antonio. 43-year-old Richard Reyes Calderon, taken into custody late last night in Atascosa County. He's wanted in connection with a murder up in Dallas. Calderon is currently being held at the Bear County Jail on a bail totaling more than a million dollars. We've also learned the name of a man killed in a train crash this week. He is Joe Frank Watkins. He died Monday afternoon after San Antonio police say he was walking along train tracks. This was near Gibbs Sprawl and Miller Road on the northeast side. Despite emergency crews trying life saving measures, Watkins died at the scene. It's almost 21 years now since a day passed when no one died on Texas roadways. Tech stop trying to end that streak. Our Samuel King joins us now. Samuel officials concerned about this ongoing trend of traffic fatalities. Yeah, Ursula and Steve, as of this morning, there have been 3,556 traffic fatalities in 2021. That's on pace for 4,200. That will be more 300 more than in 2020, which already had the highest numbers since the mid 1980s. Speeding accounts for almost a third of traffic fatalities. As you can see there, officials say there's another factor that's also preventable. 889 people died in crashes this year. They were not wearing seatbelts. That's just, it, it's unimaginable and there's no reason for that. Everyone should be buckling up every ride, every rider. Educational is TxDOT stepping up education efforts and its industry campaign. Texans being asked to do their part and drive safely each time they're behind the wheel. We'll have more on that, of course, coming up at 6. As for uh, this evening's commute, let's take a look at uh, TransGuide if we, we could this evening. And we'll take a look out here. Actually, let me walk over. My uh, system has stalled, which is not what you want to see, but uh, things are looking mostly okay. Mostly uh, normal hill. Here's is a bit of a frozen picture. Uh, we do have a delay uh, downtown coming in. We'll have more on that throughout the evening, guys. Over to you. Thanks so much, Sam. A push to expand the city's non-discrimination ordinance to cover private sector businesses in San Antonio now being met with pushback by business groups and some on city council. District 2 Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez is proposing to expand the 2013 ordinance that currently protects mainly city employees from discrimination based on gender identity, sexual orientation and veteran status. Garrett Berger tells us rather tells us who is arguing against adding private business and why. Thank you all once more and thank you guys all for being here. As supporters of expanding the city's non-discrimination ordinance crowded the steps of City Hall on Friday, opponents were busy too. My phone was ringing off the hook within minutes after that press conference. District 8 Councilman Manny Pelias says he sent this lengthy email on Monday to leaders of the business community, slamming the plan to expand the NDO, which includes possibly increasing penalties. The Northside Councilman practices employment law and says while he's against discrimination, that doesn't mean municipal regulation is the answer. He argues that city government's not as well equipped as the state and federal agencies that already cover employment discrimination, and it sends a bad message to businesses. You know, everybody's sort of flabbergasted and, um, you know, there's not a business group out there who's receptive to, you know, this becoming a reality. But when we reached out to Chambers of Commerce ourselves, they either didn't comment on the record or didn't respond. In a short email, the San Antonio Manufacturers Association's president did say they were against expanding the NDO, but had no additional comment. 
In what appears to be an unintentional twist, the president and CEO of the North San Antonio Chamber, which had already given Quesada a no-comment statement, included us on an email calling Samba's response perfect. We said the same thing, she wrote. Don't want to give the District 2 councilman what he wants, media attention. Both McKee Rodriguez and Pelias say the ball is in the mayor's court now as head of the governance committee. But the mayor says he doesn't know when it's going to come up yet. So the CCRs get heard when the, once the staff is able to do their um, preliminary work, their due diligence to be able to present something to the city council and the committee. Work that's pending on a number of other requests, too. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Hunger, it's an epidemic that impacts millions of lives all across the nation. And here at home, fighting hunger, the driving force behind an effort from an urban farm on our city's east side. Tiffany Wertz takes a look at how they're fighting food insecurity in Bear County, one harvest at a time. Look at this beautiful cabbage. About 18,000 pounds of vegetables and fruits grown here at the Greenies Urban Farm in the east side has been donated for distribution around Bear County. This is exactly what you want. You know, this nice, snappy, tasty, delicious green beans. The farm is a collaboration between Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Services and Bear County. We have about uh, $14 million total that we'll be investing on these grounds, 11 million of which was just passed in the Commissioner's Court budget in uh, mid-September. That will help build the Agricultural Extension Service headquarters. Food was handed out this morning. With families still struggling due to COVID-19, this food couldn't have come at a better time. People are having a hard time. This gives them a little bit of a break. And right before Thanksgiving, they may have some great veggies at the table. Food from this garden has been given to the San Antonio Food Bank, the Wheatley Senior Living Apartments, and to families that are part of University Health's CareLink program. Throughout this pandemic, we've seen lots of people suffer uh, from food insecurity and many people at all, at all different levels. And food costs have been increasing. So being being able to provide them fresh fruits and vegetables from this garden is just a beautiful partnership we've been able to have. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom this evening with a look ahead to what we are working on for six o'clock. In a Bear County courtroom today, the trial of R.C. Curtis. He's a man accused in the murder of Paula Boyd. The 75-year-old was a beloved HEB employee found dead in her apartment back in 2015. She died of blunt force trauma and strangulation. The suspect in this case, R.C. Curtis, is Boyd's grandson-in-law. Our Jeffany Gray will have a rundown of what happened in court today. Another story coming up at 6 o'clock, all about a San Antonio man's unexpected journey. I did not really have much of a plan. I knew that I needed to go northwest. And boy, did he. Michael Collins walked. He walked from San Antonio to Alaska, 3,800 miles. And he did it for a reason. We'll talk to him about that journey and his story coming up at six o'clock. Thank you, Myra. New at five, the holiday hustle. Anxious retailers aren't taking chances with the supply chain issues. They're already rolling out promotions, which might be adding to your stress. Take a breath. Over your side's Marilyn Moritz with some ways to defrazzle your holiday shopping. Anything wrapped? Holiday shopping can be stressful. Add the microchip shortage, supply chain disruptions, labor. This year, it's trickier. But a few smooth moves can ease your stress. First, start early. Before Black Friday, retailers are ready. So retailers want to try to make this easier on you by extending Black Friday. Best Buy is guaranteeing Black Friday prices through late November. Walmart is offering early online shopping times to Walmart Plus members. And Target will offer partial refunds if you buy something now that later drops in price. No matter where you shop, be flexible. And Consumer Report says consider non-electronics. Some of the items that you're going to want to X off your list probably are PlayStations, um, a lot of TVs are going to be difficult to buy. Basically anything with a chip in that can come in toy form as well. A lot of electronic toys. Another way to relieve shopping anxiety? I recommend looking for experiential gifts, gift certificates to spas, to restaurants, homemade gifts, 
even donations to charities. These are all really great gift ideas and they allow you to completely forego the supply chain issues. And shop locally. You may find a unique gift that you don't need to ship. And if you just can't find what you want when you want, there's always the tried and true gift card. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. The Texas Cavaliers, a big part of Fiesta. They raise money for charities serving our community. The organization they're trying to raise a million dollars for now. And who's next year's Grand Marshal? That's a little hint right there. Next. All right, it might be early November, but the Texas Cavaliers jumping ahead to April and Fiesta today. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it, but yeah. OK. They, this morning they revealed the 2022 charitable honoree and it's Haven for Hope. The Texas Cavaliers founded its charitable foundation back in 1989. They've been helping children in the community ever since, and next year will be no different. They're aiming to raise more than a million dollars for Haven for Hope, and they say they're already near that goal. There's no place that serves children in need better than Haven for Hope, and we are honored this year to help them in the hard work we do. We're raising the money, but they're doing the hard work to help these families transition uh, to a better life. The Cavaliers also announced their grand marshal for next year's parade. It is Texas country music superstar Randy Rogers. Fiesta 2022 runs March 31st through April 10th. The Texas Cavaliers River Parade is scheduled for April 4th. We want to Take a live look right now. Sky 12 is flying near the medical center area. This is in the 5100 block of Wurzbach Road, close to Loop 410 and Evers Road. You can see there is a fire burning. It looks like behind the building. Yeah, I don't know if that's a garage back there or if it's something that's caught fire actually behind what, you know, looks like it may be a warehouse or some sort of building. Hard to get an idea of exactly what it is, but you can see the gray smoke coming from back there. We're going to continue to monitor this situation and try and figure out exactly what is on fire, but it's an active situation, that's for sure. I'm wondering if the gusty winds that we've had all day today are going to make this a little bit more complicated. Try and we're told that more than 20 units responding to this fire, so they're concerned. Yeah. Meanwhile, let's switch over to Adam Kasky. Adam, uh, cold one today. Uh, actually, I just looked it up. Today was the coldest afternoon since February 16th. Wow. That tells you something, doesn't it? Now, tomorrow we'll rebound back into the 60s by Saturday near 70, Sunday in the mid 70s. So 70s are just around the corner, and the average high, by the way, is 76 degrees. So we're not far from that. Okay, let's get right to it. Take a look at our skies out there. And those low clouds have hung around despite getting rid of the rainfall. And that moving out, the low clouds are starting to break up a little bit east of I 35, closer to the coastal plain, but for the most part, we're still socked in underneath those low clouds and it's of course affecting temperatures directly. Notice other parts of Texas actually have a little bit of sunshine. Those locations in the 60s, Marfa 62, Amarillo 64, Dallas right near 60, whereas underneath the clouds, we are mostly in the 50s, 56 in Hondo, 51 Kerrville, Pleasanton at 59 and New Braunfels right now at 57. So let's fast forward to tomorrow morning. This is what we're expecting. Near 40 degrees north of San Antonio. Kerrville 40, Canyon Lake about 41. You get south of town closer to 50. Catula 50, Beeville about 48. Locally, we're thinking about 46 downtown San Antonio, but that means even cooler in outlying areas. Bernie 41, Timberwood Park 41, 43 New Braunfels and 43 in Converse. Even Elmendorf about 43 come tomorrow morning. Now those morning low temperatures will drop a few more degrees into Saturday. We're guessing about 44 in and around San Antonio. But by the early part of next week, that's when those morning temperatures rise a little bit back closer to 60 and actually above average for this time of year. Taking a look at the dew points outside. Very dry air. That northerly wind has dried out our air, so dew points by and large in the 40s right now, so we're not really feeling any mugginess out there, and we won't until the early part of next week. Just a hint, a little hint of humidity, I think, by Monday, Tuesday time frame. Here's a big picture. The dip in the upper level flow, that has pushed east, that has moved out, the rain moved out along with it. Big Blue H over Baja Peninsula, that's going to gradually settle in 
give us a little bump in the upper level flow and a dry stretch of weather. So for tomorrow, we start in the 40s. By the afternoon, we make it up into the mid 60s. We'll start the day with a little bit of cloud cover, but then that's going to lead to a decent amount of sunshine by the afternoon. So more grayness to start the day. Then later on, we'll have a good amount of sunshine this weekend. Looking and feeling good. Saturday is going to be the low point temperature wise at 44, but by the afternoon, we're near 70 and mid 70s by Sunday. Next week, we'll be flirting with 80 degrees. Wouldn't surprise me if we actually hit 80 by about Monday through Wednesday time frame, but right now we don't have any real rain chances in the forecast. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, the Spurs are so young. Yeah, but man, they need somebody who can step up in crunch time. That's right. They don't have that go to guy right now. They need to work on that. Obviously, they know that when we come back, we'll bring you up to date on how they're looking going into this road trip. And what does being the NFC defensive player of the week mean to Micah Parsons and an update on Dak coming up? Our San Antonio Spurs have now lost six of their first eight games of the 2021-2022 season, and for the most part, a very common theme, unable to close out in the fourth quarter. That was the case last night when the Spurs met the Mavs in the rematch of their I-35 rivals from last week. Drew Eubank started in place of Jakob Perto, who's been sidelined into the NBA's health and safety protocols. Here's He's able to deliver the hook, followed by Devin Vassell's one-handed jam. We're tied at the end of one. Luka Doncic gets the Mavs out to a 12-point lead with this three. But the Spurs bounce right back. Lonnie Walker, the four, with a big-time block that starts the break. And Vassell is going to wind up from the corner for the three. Spurs are back within two behind Devin's 14 first-half points within one at the break. In the third quarter, Vassell would reach a new career high with 21. Keldon Johnson actually got the Spurs out to a nine-point lead and as he takes it to the rim. But once again, could not finish. Jalen Brunson gives the Mavs a lead with 105-102 with 21 seconds left. Mavs up four now when Lonnie Walker the four hits a corner three but when you take a look at the replay he actually stepped out of bounds. No review. Spurs within one with four seconds to go. Spurs have the last attempt to win a former Spur Boban Marjanovic in to guard the inbound and all Johnson can do is throw it up. The prayer is not answered. The Spurs fall 109-108. It's frustrating because like we continue to say we're like this close and making little mistakes and uh, building these good habits and, you know, making sure we could carry good things from this game to the next game and get the wins, uh, you know. So I'm not going to sit here and say it take time because we have a win now mentality, you know, from everybody, the coaches, the players. So we got to just get it done. No no excuses, no questions. You know, we got to limit, limit the, you know, the, the mistakes. Spurs now hit the road. They take on Orlando. Remember, that's the team they open their season with. They actually have one of their wins against the Magic. They'll try again tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Amway Center. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good news to the Dallas Cowboys fans. At this point, Dak Prescott is expected to play this Sunday when the Cowboys host the Denver Broncos. But his wide receiver, C.D. Lamb, did not practice today after injuring his ankle during practice on Wednesday. Micah Parsons is coming off one of his best games of the season. And for that, he has been recognized as the NFC's Defensive Player of the Week. What does that mean to Micah? I feel like it's like a stepping stone of what I could be capable of. Uh, I just got to be consistent and keep working hard, but it shows what I can do on a weekly basis. I just got to keep doing it. Now, I'll give you a full update on Dak. He participated in a practice, full participation today, so that's great news. That means it sets himself up for what looks to be a return into the starting lineup this Sunday against the Broncos. Yeah, that people have their fingers crossed. C.D. Lamb? Uh, he did not participate in practice today, so that is not a good sign. He injured yeah. his ankle yesterday. All right. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Along with the usual slowdowns, we have a crash right in the middle of the map. This is I-10 eastbound at Presa. Traffic crawling near down to 14 miles per hour. So here's how that looks on Transguide. You can see at least uh, one lane block, maybe even more. We'll keep an eye on this over the next half hour, guys. Thank you, Samuel. And thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. See you back here at 6.